Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Home Life with Rebecca, Rebecca's Whimsical Life, Devore Wild. I don't even know it's the simple life. I've had so many channel names, I'm really not sure what this channel is about anymore. So welcome back to my channel and happy Monday. Um, not sure what this video is going to be about. Maybe a day in the life. I got up pretty early this morning around 6. My husband works for our school district as an electrician. And during the summer, he worked 10-hour shifts, um, like 4.10. So he did have Fridays off. But he would leave at 6 in the morning. And so now he's back on the regular work schedule. So he has to go on at 7 and he gets off at 4. But he gets an hour lunch. So because school starts next week for all the kids. But today is my daughter Allison's first day of college. And that feels so weird to say. It feels weird to say that I have an 18 year old. And now it feels weird to say that I have a kiddo who's in college because, you know, as your firstborn, they're always your baby. They're just the first for everything. So it feels sort of monumental and I wanted to make sure that I documented it because if anything with my channel, um, I like the fact that down the, you know, down the road, I can look back at these and it's just good to have those memories. So she has to be at her first class at nine o'clock. So she has two classes today. It's, I think it's communications and English, I want to say or general education. She wants to be a high school English teacher and she wants to work at an alternative high school, um, kind of like the one that she went to because she really felt, because she went through some really, really difficult times when we moved here, felt like she didn't fit in. She went from being a straight A student to almost dropping out of school, honestly. Um, it was just a really, really hard three years for not just her, but for me and my husband also, because um, it is hard to watch your child struggle and knowing that they're smart and capable, but just society and peer pressure and social media and moving to a new town, feeling like you don't fit in, um, is very challenging. And I couldn't even pretend to know what she was going through. And so it became, it got to the point where if she wanted to graduate, which at first she did she did she didn't care at first she was like i don't care if i drop out I, she didn't care about really much of anything it gotten so bad but we felt like our last attempts would be to send her to an alternative school so back when i was in high school they were called continuation schools um and i'd always stereotyped them as the the high schools were all the kids who were troublemakers or used drugs, you know, that's where those kiddos went. And I think that's why they changed the name to Alternative because, and yes, there are <laughs> troublemakers that go there and there are the kiddos that are using that go there. And I hate to say, it, but you know, our daughter went through some of those same issues, but it is, it's also for the kiddos who are really struggling with mental health issues as well and it was a different crowd over at her alternative school kids and teachers and the first couple months you know she did get involved with the wrong crowd but and I won't go into details but we had a scare and I think it kind of opened her eyes and then when we went and visited with my dad because she was she was going to school but she was telling us that she wasn't going to walk because at this high school you um don't have to like do, I guess you don't have to do the graduation ceremony at any high school if you choose not to participate. <clears throat> but once she decided that she wanted to actually finish, she found out that she was getting ahead of credits there and so that she'd be able to graduate in January. So she'd be, she'd be done like a whole semester earlier, it's trimesters here. So she'd be done two trimesters early. And then she told us, I, I don't wanna walk. And, that was really hard for me because I feel like as a as a parent, like you see your child go through school and their accomplishments and and their obstacles, like you want to see them get that diploma. And it's I and maybe a little bit selfish. I felt like it was for me and my husband too, as much as it was from for her. Like, hey, you you did this, like you got through it. Well, when we visited my dad, 
before he passed in January, and I've talked about this before, he, um, and it wasn't planned, I didn't ask him to say anything, um, sorry, I still get choked up when I think about it, he talked to her, and, uh, pretty much talked her into, you know, you, sh you should walk, if, if anything, walk for, walk for yourself most of all, so, and he was said, if, if I'm healthy, you know, I'll be there. And if <laughs> there's a video of it, and he's like, and if I'm not, I'm not. But anyway, so I feel like kind of after that, she started to really get her life on track. And yeah, she walked. You guys saw that video. I mean, unless you're new to my channel. Hello. I have six kids and we live in Idaho. So she, she walked in June and Lincoln or the school she went to, it really... I think changed her life um especially the teachers there because they are smaller class sizes but she felt like she mattered um and not any disrespect to any of the teachers at the the regular high school where my other two kiddos go but they are larger class sizes and there's a lot more going on so it, it's harder and I think she felt very lost there I think she felt like she'd already kind of like developed this reputation. So she just had the mindset that nobody cared that went there. Um, a lot of times uh, people with borderline personality disorder, which she did get diagnosed with, have this black and white thinking. There's no gray area. So it's either all good or all bad. And so because of some of the things that happened at her old high school, anybody that went there got put in a box labeled all bad so it didn't matter even the good teachers they were there that were there that tried to help her it became an all bad situation in her head and and for people with BPD it is very real people get bipolar and borderline personality disorder mixed up a lot and bipolar is a mood disorder BPD is a personality disorder so it's not like it could even be controlled through medication there really isn't any it's just learning how to change your thought process which for anybody that's super hard for a person with BPD it's even it's even harder so when she went to her new school and the smaller class sizes and the teachers are kind of used to having kids that are the troublemakers or have substance abuse issues and mental health issues um, they're equipped more to deal with those kiddos and so I think right away she felt understood and she didn't feel like a number and she didn't feel put off and she felt like her opinions mattered and she felt like what she had to say mattered and she felt like she was accepted even though she had done all these things da, 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 in the past that they still saw her as a person as her that she could overcome those things and that she just wasn't put in a little box of oh you know you did this so that's just who you are now um which again like i think the other some of the other teachers at the other school were probably the same way but because of that bpd she just it became all that and so slowly i just kind of saw her mature and evolve and wanting to go to school and then you know she walked and then right after graduation she was like She'd always toyed with the idea of being a teacher when she was really young. And then she thought maybe she wanted to be, she got really into like um, environmental stuff. Like she said, I want to be an environmental lawyer. And then she went through a stage where she wanted to be like a, a like crime scene investigator. <laughs> um, but she ended up going back to her first love. And of course she's young, she's 18. Like I said, today's her very first day of college. So this could totally change, but she decided I want to be a teacher a high school English teacher, which is her favorite subject. She's a fabulous writer and she wants to teach at an alternative school. So that's the career path that we set up with the counselor at the junior college. She's gonna attend a two-year college first, which I think is a great idea because it saves lots of money. She was able to get a grant because of our family size too and got a computer and I'm about to go drop her off here in about 15 minutes. So I told her I'm gonna take a picture because I wanna put a picture of her first day kindergarten with her first day of college so we can timestamp it and remember it forever. I told her that last night she kind of rolled her eyes at me but you know someday when she has kids she'll understand but that's kind of the story of where we're at right now and she goes to school on Mondays and Wednesdays and then on Fridays she's got a full load she's taking four classes 12 units communications general education and I think that's just a class to 
give you an idea of what you'll be taking to become a teacher, like the whole process of it. I'm assuming, I don't know for sure, an English class and then psychology, like the intro to, psych to psychology. And so I'm really excited for her and I'm sure she's nervous. We've got all her books and we found her classes, which were really easy. They're all in the same building. And it's the college is so close that if she needs to, she can walk, you know, in the winter time, sometimes that's, that's iffy because sometimes it gets really cold and black ice and you have to kind of walk on a main street. I mean, there's sidewalks and stuff, but it, it sort of freaks me out. So anyways, wish her luck, wish me luck, because I'm probably going to cry when I drop her off. And then tonight is a back to school night. So I think I'll just make this a separate video since I rambled for 10 minutes. And then maybe I'll go ahead and do like a little day in the life, um, show you what I might make for dinner. I already did my yoga this morning, which I don't know why I don't do it every day, because every time I do it, I feel so much better. Um, and maybe I'll film a little bit of Wes and Jilly uh, get in their lockers. If, they might not want me to, so I don't know. Maybe I'll go ahead and make a reel on Instagram because um, they're they're shorter. So make sure you follow me on Instagram at Rebecca DeVore and on Facebook at Rebecca DeVore. I think both. I think right now both of my accounts are public, so you can just you know add me as a friend. Maybe not Facebook. I think I have to approve it. But you know I do post a lot over there as well. So with that being said, I just want to say chicken tendies um, in case I don't make another video today. Hope everybody has a great start to their week. Um, if you're like us, enjoy your last week of summer. I am selfish and I'm ready for my kids to come back to school. I just really like want to get a deep clean in the house and uh, rearrange some of my pictures on the wall. And it's just hard to do when all the kids are home, get a good mop in. I feel like I mop and then they come and walk on it before it's dry. <laughs> it's just really hard with eight people in the house, you know, seven all the time so yeah anyway okay i'm gonna sign off chicken tendies guys leave me a comment below if you have kiddos that are starting college also or been through this and how you felt about it what your emotions were let me know i'd love to hear from you guys bye